once again, Brian Smith using his uh, little moles in the race. In, when I say in the race, and it often is with Brian, literally, uh, not actually, sorry, <laughs> not on the bike, but in amongst the various staff working on the race, uh, Brian has his very handy moles, and one of those moles has been drilled to give us that information. We will, of course, not disclose said moles uh, identification, but very handy to have Brian, so thank you for that. It's the first few bits of real greenery, certainly while I've been on the mic, that I've commentated on this year because we've had a fair few bits of dusty, sandy <laughs> and dry conditions the last few weeks while we've been seeking out the warmer parts of the world to bring you some great racing at the start of this season. Uh, this is lush and green in Galicia, and I do hope you're enjoying it. Um, I had a few comments yesterday on socials after the, uh, after the, the coverage that, that, you know, questioning why... Brian and I hadn't really mentioned what's going on in the east of Europe, and of course it is a heavy cloud hanging over much of world news at the moment. Um, rather than us positioning ourselves and talking about it all the time, our job is very much hopefully to bring you a little bit of light relief uh, without ever diminishing quite how serious that situation is. So please don't think we're ignoring it. We are just doing our best, hopefully, to bring a little bit of sunshine and joy to the lives of people who are watching this uh, worldwide. It is, though, as I'm acutely aware, just sport. Hey, it's Jez Cox here. That's me. If you've not heard me on this network before, I've been knocking around on Eurosport GCN for a good few years now, but I am today Tutsol. I'm on my own, and I'm coming to you, by the way, from Chiswick in West London. And it's worth pointing out, as I made my way into London today to get to my commentary position to bring you these live pictures, I am also, of course, coming to you from a, uh, a city in mourning, a city and a country, and indeed a commonwealth in mourning this week, of course, after the sad passing of Queen Elizabeth II, uh, her coffin making its way across Scotland to be on the Royal Mile in Edinburgh today. And uh, it goes without saying, the, uh, the thoughts of myself and all of us here at Eurosport GCN and the wider Warner Brothers Discovery family are with the royal family at this time, uh, of course, and all those who are affected by this period of mourning. I'm conscious that our live pictures go out across the world to so many Commonwealth countries who this will have affected, I'm absolutely certain. Beautiful. And I bet you there's some massive wild boar in that forest too. It's just got wild boar written all over it, hasn't it? You've got to look out <laughs> for those wild boar, I tell I know, you. I know. I've had wild boar on my mind all week since I had a little outburst earlier in the week. Um, I can't think what we were covering. It might have been Parry Camembert. No, it might have been Parry Camembert. We had a, a rampaging wild boar alongside the side of the road. And they're just wonderful creatures. I mean, um, you know, in, in England, where we're from, where we, where we live, I should say, um, we occasionally get, well, I think there are parts of the country, I think in the New Forest, where, uh, where, where Dan Lloyd hails from, there are still some wild pigs. But they're effectively farm pigs that just sort of wander around and every now and again one or two go missing, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But I'm talking wild, hairy pigs with little, you know, what do you call those things? Like horns. Um, just raging, you know, running wild all over the French countryside. It's wonderful. It's amazing they still exist because the, the French are very keen on their chasse. The, hunt, the hunting is quite popular, but wild boars seem to have hidden away and survived it. Um, there we go, anyway. I always try and bring a bit of a glimpse of the local wildlife flavour to it. We haven't seen one here yet today, but I'll, it just looks... Those, those forests look so boary. Um, they've got to be in there. Now, should we get back to the racing? <laughs> uh, finishing circuit, which is the Côte de la Baconniere, which I suspect may be something where they kill and cut up pigs. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm presuming it is. I'm, I, I meant to look that one up. I'll check it. I bet it is, you know, Danny. It's the Côte de la Baconniere, as in bacon. <laughs> Do you think I'm guessing that? Someone let us know, yeah? <laughs> like, they're going to be the end game. One lap to go, the bell being rung. One 3.2 kilometre lap. And that is the official Tour de France bell, I'm pleased to say, as you can well, see. I think that's the most enthusiastic bell ringer I've seen. I've seen some, I must admit, in my time working on... Uh, Working live down at the roadside, I've been stood next to some incredible bell ringing, the likes of which is still ringing in my crushed eardrum as I speak. Um, but you're right, that was very enthusiastic. I love it. 